Uh, good morning, Kent Bain with Nine Business Group and Elevate Chat. Uh, we have the pleasure of Linda Crockett joining us today. Linda, welcome. Please introduce yourself, your company, and what makes you different, what sets you apart, and possibly why people buy from you versus your competition. Hi, Kent. Thanks for having me on your show. My name is Linda Crockett. I am the founder of the Canadian Institute of Workplace Bullying and Harassment Resource Centre. Uh, what makes me different is my topic area. When I started this, nobody was doing this kind of work. So my qualifications, the areas that I cover on this topic, uh, the multiple resources that I offer, the variety of resources, and the length of hands-on experience I've had. It's been 12 years. Uh, that sets me apart, I believe. Okay, something came to mind. I'm going off script. Please forgive me. What does bullying mean? I, I, I've been around it. I'm older. I, I'm sure I was bullied in elementary school, but there's, it's also been used in conversation with me and I think misused. So oh, yeah. selfishly sure. speaking, can you share with me what yeah. bullying is or isn't, whether it be in a, a professional relationship or even in personal relationships? Well, first, I, I want to I want to say that bullying that we experienced in school is much different than what we are experiencing in the workplace, because in the school, it's primarily physical. There is some psychological, there's some verbal assaults, but it's primarily physical. Now, it's the big brute going out for the meek and mild, right? But in the workplace, it's the opposite, and it's primarily psychological. So psychological head games, right? So if you think about the definition of, or the quote, death by a thousand cuts, it certainly doesn't happen in the first five or 10 cuts. And the cut might be, you know, rumors or, or uh, yelling at you or finger in your face or slamming the door or, you know, excluding you, ostracizing you. There's a long list of things. But think about death by a thousand cuts. It, it, it might take you 600 cuts. It might take me 800. We're all different. We come from different backgrounds. We have different resourcing. So it is a variety of different negative actions, comments, tactics used over a period of time. Research literally says six months or more. I will say with my hands-on experience, three months or more. And you have to have a, a certain timeline. You have to. It's not black and white, but you have to have a bit of a timeline. Prior to three months, we are talking about abrasiveness, rudeness, incivility, you know, just meanness and sarcasm. And we have to we have to nip it right there. But then it progresses to to psychological harassment, which is bullying. So psychologically, you know, gaslighting is the more extreme. That's psychological violence. So over a period of time, with or without intent, to cause you some form of harm. Hmm. And not necessarily for personal gain. Pardon? So, so, when, so if I'm theoretically bullying a, a classmate, a, a coworker, it's not necessarily for my gain. I'm just, whether I'm doing it on purpose or not, it may not be for my gain. It's just there. Well, what you're asking asking a complex question there because you're asking why do people bully and that is that is a good question to ask but it's never a one brush answer you know we do have our narcissist psychopath sociopaths in the workplace that's the worst case scenario that's your psychological violence but over here we have people sometimes that just haven't dealt with childhood abuse they don't have the communication skills they have anger management issues they have other trauma in their life they might have a mental health diagnosis or they don't they should have or they're doing their meds or they're not um, they might be an addict they might be extorting money and covering it up they might be an, an addict and covering it up you know they might have been trained to be authoritarian leadership style and abuse it and get rewarded for it promoted for it bonuses for it that's the only way they ever knew and they were rewarded there's just so many reasons why people do so every case is unique that's 100 what is the biggest challenge you've overcome since starting a business? How did you tackle it? How did you solve it? How did you overcome it? What's the result? Well, there's a number of things. I mean, I'm dealing with people, human beings, right? So I see a lot of torture, a lot of damage, a lot of pain in men and women. And, you know, that's hard to watch that, to see hard, dedicated, really ethical people get abused and and usually those are the ones who are getting targeted it is the ones who are skilled it is the ones who are stepping up and saying hey you can't talk like that that's difficult it's also difficult to see the potential in an organization 
that if they just did the right thing, the potential for productivity and reputation and the money they would save, it's frustrating not to get heard to be to be told that, oh, you know, these people are just it's it's their fault. They're doing something wrong. It's hard to see people being accused. We're doing the same thing we did with domestic violence and sexual assault. We're blaming the victims. And by the way, I don't call employees victims. I call them targets because oh. a Bullying takes your power away, and we want to get power back. So we call them targets, not bullying, not uh, victims. So the biggest challenge really is, is, is almost in a way the 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 companies that allow it to happen, intentionally yeah. or not. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we started, as we built this relationship, we've been talking about planning, and you have a unique and different way of doing your quote unquote annual review. So please share with us. I think it's, it's very powerful. So tell us a little bit more about how you plan, how you do it, and what role it plays in your business. Well, in my business, I can look for different trends, right? So, you know, who are the who are the employers that are calling me for help? Is it the oil and gas industry? Is it the, the nursing, teaching, whatever whatever industry is calling me more that year? And, and even the employees, what are the trends in employees? I would have to say probably for the first six or seven years, it was mainly women coming in. And then there was a year it was all men. So I saw the trend and I have to gear what my services are, what my marketing strategies are towards that trend. And for example, last year I came to, and I'm just scratching my head figuring out why aren't employers getting it? There's millions being lost, millions. So obviously money doesn't talk. So I decided as of January that every Monday I would post on social media case law where an employee won and were awarded quite a lot of money. And employers, I was hoping employers would see, it's not only money you're losing, it's also your reputation. This is going to expose you if you don't start to do the right thing. Very fascinating. So what is, have you done the planning for next year yet? Do you know what that pattern might be? I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, what I'm seeing this year, let me just repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> um, at, Last year, what I observed is quite a huge change in the world of awareness. So there are new, you know, resources that are popping up in every country. It, our Workplace Bullying Awareness Week has gone international, and I know resources are available now. I don't feel like I'm the only one out there. For the last three or four years, it's growing. So I can now put my focus on other areas, which is the systemic issues, you know, the internal and the external systemic issues, the, the communication and collaboration between insurance and medical, or medical and WCB, or OHS and WCB, and all those systemic things that are the gaps and the problems there. That's where we're focusing. We're looking at publishing some research, publishing a book, and a few other surprises. Excellent. That sounds exciting. Good for you. Um, if there was a thief in your business, a pirate, what would they be stealing from you? Well, I can speak to that from actual experience. Uh, I did have somebody that was working with me for quite a while, and it took quite a while for me to catch on. But slowly, you know, like my definition of workplace bullying is that death by a thousand cuts. Slowly, this person would cut away at my confidence, and I didn't see it coming. It isn't until I started to feel the injury, I realized, oh my goodness, there's these subtle nuances, and that's what people keep missing about workplace bullying or psychological harassment, is these subtle nuances. And here I am, a, special, a specialist, I teach on this. It can still happen to people like us, yes. And yes, it did happen. This person was stealing my confidence. Just slowly stealing my skill set, skill, stealing my knowledge, but also my confidence. And it impacted me quite seriously, quite quite a bit. I was uh, devastated and humiliated and shamed, just like I was back in the day when I was first realized that I had been bullied. Here I was bullied on the job, on the very job that I do. Yes, it happens to us anti-bullying specialists. How did you overcome it? How did you resolve it? Well, like, like I do with my clients, I had to admit that it was happening to me. I had to admit that I was human. I had to admit that, you know, I'm, I'm still going to be somebody that would be targeted because I am good at what I do and people like this work and they want to take this work. So no matter what, I'm going to have to, I recovered quicker. I have to say, I mean, back in the day when I was first hurt, it took me years to recover. It took me a couple of weeks this time to recover. That's better. 
but you know, it, 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 we're human, it's betrayal. And there is a period of time where you have to grieve and you learn from it. And then you talk about it and you share the stories like I am here. Thank you very much. Very open and vulnerable. What is your definition of a successful business? What does it mean for your business to be successful? A successful business, I can answer that both in one, is that I'm actually doing what I set out to achieve. Change the systems. Improve the systems. Help people. Get people out of isolation. Get people talking. Get people coming forward and making complaints. Not suffering for years and years like I have been seeing in the first part of my business. So knowing that we're making a difference, that's success to me. And the bonus part is that my business is growing and growing and growing. So number one, we're helping people. Number two, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So in, in all, almost in a sad way, your business is growing because the problem exists and you're and in a good way, you're creating awareness so people can fix it. Well said. What do you want to be known for? I want to be known for my courage. This has not been easy. I want to be known for my sincerity and authenticity. Um, I want to be known for being genuine, for doing my best, and for knowing that I don't know everything. I'm not superwoman. I can't fix everybody, but I do my best. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Th thanks again for your time, Linda. For those out there who have or think they have some awareness to it, where can they get more information? Where can they find you? What would be a good outreach for them to find you? whether it be a phone number, website, et cetera, how do they find you? My email is all one word, psychological safety first at gmail.com. Plain and simple. Thank you very much, Linda. You've been great. Enjoy the wonderful day and the sunshine we have coming your way. It better have a great be. Weekend. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye.